Hey everyone, this is SG DeVries, and today I have got an old pallet on my work table in front of me, and you're probably wondering why. That is because I am going to try to turn this pallet into one of these. First thing we got to do is start taking this old pallet apart. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my small hand sander here and just sand off all the, all the dirt and grit that's on the top of these things. This top one is what it's starting out as, straight off the pallet, and the bottom one is how it's ending up after I get it through the thickness sander. I realized that I'd forgotten to turn my camera on a couple times and missed showing cutting some parts. So I'm going to give you a little brief update on where we are on the construction. You saw me cutting out these and some of these side parts. I have glued the frame together. Um, I've cut some spacers that fit between the two frame parts. Uh, I didn't finish these as well as some of the other stuff because you don't really see them. I didn't need to clean it up quite as good. Um, I've cut the brackets here which the guide wheels fit along there. These are glued on already with the dowels already glued in. And I have already cut the front wheel brackets which will eventually fit on on either side right here. The pieces you saw me making just a little bit ago are these pieces that fit on right here. This whole system is glued on right above here. 
And these pieces, which I didn't go into a whole lot of detail about, you saw me making these. This, this rotates. This slides into here. And these little jaws, if I can get them, there we go. They fit in here. Now what this does is these locking jaws allow this piece to be adjustable in and out. So there will be eventually be the third wheel that holds the treads in, goes on right here. And then this piece can be cinched down tight onto here so that doesn't move. And that is your tread tensioning mechanism. A couple other pieces I have made that I haven't glued on yet. I have made the front grill, which will fit on, I have to glue this on yet, but which will fit on just like this. The, the slots are for a couple of levers that go in and control the blade control. And this piece I have to trim down and that actually fits right underneath it there. Well, you've seen me make some of these parts. I haven't shown all of them, uh, just because it's a lot of little parts and a lot of boring video to sit through. Of course, the dowels, which are this, these, these, and these parts, are made just from um, store-bought dowel. But all these little parts here are all made from the pallet, as well as these little brackets that I have gluing right now. These pieces are also made from the pallet, with the round rings at the end being regular dowel. So it's time to assemble my hydraulics together.
each tread is made out of four pieces. There's the main piece here that we've been cutting out in the past several sections of the video. Then there's this plate which fits across here, which I call a, a bearing plate or a ground contact plate, which is the part of the tread that actually has on the outside and it actually comes into contact with the ground. Um, and then on the underside, the side is the wheel, there is two of these about right there, and those help track on the grooves that are in the wheels. And now it's time to glue these tread belts together. The way that I do it is I glue one side at a time. Now, you don't want to get any glue on that center flange. So what I do is I put a little glue in the outside edge hole like this, not pushing it in too far, in the hole. And then I push this through from that side. And that makes sure that no glue is getting pushed into the center. So I'm gluing that axle to the outer flange. And once that is dry, I will put a little dab on the inside edge and then sand them all smooth because you don't want any of those axle ends protruding out. Those are the treads installed. Next is the blade. Uh, this is the back of the or this is the front of the blade, this is the back where the brackets fit. Uh, I cut it to size and, and sanded it down along with some bunch of other wood when I found the piece that would work the right size. Now we're just marking out all these locations for all these brackets on the back. But I do want to glue all four of them at the same time so they all line up.
a blade for this is a very weird cut. If you kind of see the edge here, it's kind of got the shape of that blade drawn into it. This last cut is a little more difficult. The front one was fairly easy because I was laying flat on the table. And also with the top one, it was laying flat on the table to make that cut. This last cut, the part has to be rotated in two directions because I'm slicing off sort of this wedge triangle piece off the back. So there's no really other way to do that other than sort of freehand it.
It all seems to be working. First, we are taking these rear arms, which are the support arms for the claw, and they go on this bottom hole in the very back of the frame. With a little spacer there to make sure they're put in the right location. So, those go on, let me get that up there. There, those go on like that. Let's thread this through, and there's a spacer in there, and it's got to go through all these holes, which we're very careful to drill in just the right spot. And that goes on here, all the way through. And then the other one goes on the other side. And it can be a little tricky sometimes getting those holes lined up. Little spacers want to move. All right. There we go. That's that one that's on. There's two axles on the claw. There's a bottom and a top one. We're going to do the bottom one first. The order for this is it goes the claw, and there's a spacer. It goes through this hole, and then there's another spacer. It goes through the bottom hole of this. Now this is the arm that connects to the control arm to lift and lower the claw. Through there. And then there's another spacer other claw, oops, sorry, wrong hole, this hole here, another spacer, and all these spacers are just to make sure these pieces are all in the right position horizontally as we put this thing together. And there's another little spacer that goes in there, and then it goes through this thing, and another spacer, and here, just like that. So that part is attached. Now it eventually goes through here, and through the spacer, the other end, the other piston in the back, and there's a long spacer, and it goes through the top hole of the claw, another long spacer, another one of these, and then, ah uh, yes, goes through this spacer first, and it goes through like that. Now, I've already trimmed these so they're just the right length. Okay, let's try it again. Get those up. Matter of fact, I am going to take this rubber band, string it around there just to keep things from falling off. And I'm going to take this rubber band, string it around this side onto the axle just to keep things from falling off. Okay. It goes in here. This goes in here. Now the positioning of that will be up like this. These they're rotated forward, so they're all the way pushed in, and there you have it. So let's talk about the handle attachment. Um, I've already got it on, I didn't show a video of that, but I can show you how it's done. Now uh, you saw in here, previously, you saw me making these um, levers that go on the inside that adjust, that connect to the front claw. That is attached, let's see if we can see it any better. 
that's attached right down in here um, twice to the handle so it won't rotate. That's set with the appropriate tension so that the blade will rise up like it's supposed to. And then back here, if you can see these two levers here, are actually also attached through the handle so that the claw is up when the blade is down. And so I pull it back in the rear claw that extends those back. And you can hear I've got a few squeaks in here, but that's okay. Um, and so those levers here run off the same handle that the front blade runs off of. All right, just a couple words here about some of the details put on the side. You just saw me cutting some really thin pieces out of some of the strips of pallet that I made. That I took down with my thickness sander. Those thin strips that I cut are cut into little pieces and glued on the side here. Just as some uh, detail that you might see on, on the side of the engine if it were a real bulldozer. Just a little bit of extra detail that is on... You know, that's on, it's on both sides, it's kind of a mirror image where you see, it, you see it on this side too. So the only thing we have left now is the cab. Just a quick word about the control panel and the person. I have built, there's a little control panel in here that uh, if you build it carefully enough, you can actually keep, get the levers still to move. Um, and then there's also this little guy right here, the driver. This ring is actually separate. I'll glue the ring down and then and that ring will fit on the inside there and then the guy will, will sit in it. That way kids, if they wanna play with the driver, they can still take him out. Now all we have to do is glue the cab on 
and do a couple, you know, final touch up sandings and we'll show you the whole thing. Well, let's take a look and see how it works. I have the cork down here because my table is really slippery and the treads don't always move if it's on a really slippery surface. So we'll take a look at the treads there. Very nice. Spin it around. Treads on both sides work nice. The control handle here controls uh, both the claw and the blade up front. With one pull it'll raise the blade, lower the claw. Because the hydraulics don't go in and out, the brackets here and here compensate for the change in length that has to happen when you move it. And on the inside we've even got our little guy. I don't know if you can see him in there. Yep, he's the driver, driving away. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks better than I thought it would, considering I'm using mostly all of one wood tone. All of the wood on this machine is all from the palette except where I use dowels. Now dowels, of course, you can see all these little end caps here, all these little slices, you know, here and here, and the, and the long parts of the hydraulic are where I had to use store-bought dowels. I do not have a dowel making jig. I plan on building one, but I don't have one now, and so I, it was impractical for me to build that from the pallet at this point. Other than the dowels, everything is from the pallet. There's no wood from anywhere else. You know, the treads are 100% pallet because you know all the little the little tread tracking grooves and the little plates on the top and the main pieces are all from the pallet. You know, all these little pieces are all it's all pallet. I think it looks pretty nice. Thanks for watching my video.